On an otherwise ordinary morning in Wilbur-by-the-Sea, a small, tight-knit community nestled along Florida's Atlantic coast, residents awoke to the gentle sound of waves and the promise of another sunlit day. The air was calm, the sky painted in soft pastels, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary, until the unimaginable happened. Without warning, and with no sign of an approaching storm or the tremors of an earthquake, a section of Florida's coastline abruptly gave way. The collapse was sudden and shocking leaving locals and officials alike searching for answers as the ground beneath their feet simply disappeared. In a matter of moments a stretch of beloved beach was gone, swallowed by a silent, gaping void. Emergency crews rushed to the scene, cordoning off the area and urging residents to stay clear as the true scale of the disaster became apparent. This was no ordinary sinkhole or minor erosion. Instead, it was a dramatic signal of a deeper more insidious threat lurking beneath Florida's iconic sandy shores, a threat that had been quietly building for years, largely unnoticed by the public. Subtle warning signs had been present for those who knew where to look. Sand dunes that seemed lower each season, water lines that shifted unpredictably, and cracks in the pavement that grew wider with every passing month. Only a handful of observant locals and experts recognized these clues before the ground finally gave way with a hollow, echoing whoosh. The collapse laid bare the fragile reality beneath the picturesque surface, forcing authorities to act swiftly. Entire sections of the coastline were closed off, and the community was left to grapple with the sobering truth that their way of life was more precarious than they had ever realized. What had once been distant scientific warnings about coastal vulnerability had now become a present-day crisis. The event sent shockwaves through the region, transforming Florida's dream of endless beaches into a stark reminder of nature's power and the urgent need to understand and protect these fragile environments. To truly understand the dramatic collapse that shocked Wilbur by the sea, we must look beneath Florida's sun-drenched surface, beyond the palm trees and sandy beaches, into the hidden world below our feet. Here, the entire state rests on a vast foundation of porous limestone, a type of rock that's not solid but full of tiny holes and hidden voids, almost like a giant natural sponge. Over thousands of years, this limestone has been slowly shaped and hollowed out by the forces of nature. Each time it rains, water, made slightly acidic by carbon dioxide in the air, seeps down through the sandy soil. As it travels, it dissolves the limestone bit by bit, carving out a vast, interconnected network of underground caverns and tunnels. These hidden spaces can stretch for miles, silently growing larger with every passing year. Above these caverns, layers of sand, soil, and clay form the ground we walk on, but this ground is more fragile than it appears. Acting as a delicate bridge suspended over empty space, its strength entirely dependent on what lies beneath. The bridge remains stable only as long as groundwater fills the voids below, providing crucial buoyant support. When these underground spaces are saturated, the water helps hold up the land above, almost like a cushion. But when water levels drop, whether from drought, excessive pumping, powerful storms, or even shifting tides, the support disappears. Suddenly, the ground above can no longer hold, and it collapses without warning, creating dramatic sinkholes or even swallowing entire buildings. Along Florida's coast, the situation is even more precarious. The constant battle between fresh groundwater and encroaching saltwater from the ocean further weakens the land. Erosion, rising sea levels, and the relentless movement of water all conspire to destabilize the fragile balance beneath our feet. The collapse at Wilbur-by-the-Sea is a stark reminder that Florida's breathtaking beauty is built on a foundation that can vanish in an instant, shaped by forces we rarely see but can never ignore. Florida's fragile geology is under siege from rising seas, extreme weather, and human activity. Sea level rise pushes saltwater inland, changing groundwater chemistry and accelerating limestone dissolution. Heavy rains saturate the ground while droughts lower the water table, both destabilize the surface. Human demands for water and relentless coastal development add weight and stress to already vulnerable land. Construction, dredging, and pumping groundwater all amplify the risk, creating a feedback loop of instability. The Wilbur-by-the-Sea collapse wasn't caused by one factor, but by the convergence of these powerful interconnected forces. The next collapse is not a question of if, but when. The sudden collapse sent shockwaves through the community, triggering an immediate and coordinated response from multiple agencies, local police, fire departments, state emergency services, and even federal disaster teams all mobilized within hours, 
converging on the scene to secure the area and begin their work. The scale of the incident demanded a unified approach, with each agency bringing its own expertise and resources to the unfolding crisis. The top priority was clear, keep people safe by preventing anyone from venturing near the unstable ground. Officers and emergency workers quickly established barriers and warning signs, redirecting residents and onlookers away from the danger zone. The risk of further collapse was ever-present, and even a single misstep could have tragic consequences. To ensure public safety, wide exclusion zones were established, stretching well beyond the visibly damaged areas. These perimeters accounted for the possibility of hidden weaknesses beneath the surface, areas that looked stable but could give way without warning. The boundaries were constantly reassessed as new information came in. Teams of engineers and geologists arrived with advanced technology, deploying ground-penetrating radar, drones, and remote sensors to scan for underground voids and monitor subtle ground movements. Their work was crucial in mapping the extent of the collapse and identifying areas at risk providing real-time data to inform the ongoing response. Meanwhile, utility crews moved swiftly to disconnect power lines and shut off water valves, reducing the risk of fires, flooding, or electrical hazards. Experts from various fields collaborated closely, inspecting bridges, roads, and pipelines to assess vulnerabilities and protect critical infrastructure from further damage. The emergency response was as much a scientific investigation as it was a rescue operation. Scientists collected soil samples, analyzed maps, and worked side by side with rescue teams, racing against time to understand the invisible threats lurking beneath the surface. Every decision was made with extreme caution, guided by the knowledge that in this unpredictable landscape, unseen dangers could prove deadly. The collaboration, vigilance, and expertise of all involved were vital in protecting lives and preventing further disaster. The collapse exposed the vulnerability of everything built on Florida's shifting ground. Water, sewer, and power lines can snap, causing outages, contamination, and chaos. Roads and bridges, lifelines for evacuation and commerce, are at risk of sudden failure, especially where built on unstable fill. Buildings, seawalls, and high-rise foundations depend on ground stability. When that's lost, structural failure can follow. Energy infrastructure and marinas face similar threats with ruptured pipelines or shifting docks posing environmental and safety hazards. The event revealed that the entire coastal infrastructure is interconnected, and a single failure can trigger cascading disasters. In Florida, the ground beneath our feet is the weakest link. The economic shock was immediate, tourism halted, businesses shuttered, and workers left without income. Property values plummeted as buyers, lenders and insurers reconsidered the risks of coastal living. Homeowners faced rising insurance costs and the threat of unsellable, uninsurable properties. The collapse sowed anxiety and distrust as residents questioned the safety of their homes and the ability of officials to protect them. Lower income families and small businesses were hit hardest, lacking resources to recover or relocate. The event deepened social divides, turning a geological crisis into a long-term economic and psychological struggle. The true cost of instability is measured not just in dollars, but in the fabric of the community. The collapse devastated fragile ecosystems, burying seagrass beds, coral, and nesting beaches for endangered species. Broken sewer lines spilled raw sewage, fueling algal blooms, fish kills, and public health threats. The altered coastline disrupted freshwater flows and salinity in estuaries, stressing oysters, crabs, and juvenile fish. Pollutants long buried in soil, heavy metals chemicals, were unleashed, contaminating water and wildlife. The environmental damage rippled outward, threatening fisheries tourism and drinking water supplies. Recovery is slow, and some losses, like ancient habitats, may be permanent. The collapse left a scar not just on the land, but on the entire coastal ecosystem. As Wilbur-by-the-Sea recovers, experts face the daunting task of predicting and preventing future collapses. The threat is hidden, vast, and expensive to monitor. No technology can map every underground void. Engineering fixes are costly and limited in scope, leaving officials to react rather than prevent disasters. Legal and jurisdictional battles complicate recovery as property lines shift and responsibility blurs. The crisis demands a new approach, smarter development, better risk communication, and adaptive strategies for a dynamic coastline. Florida's future depends on respecting the power and unpredictability of its geology. The ground is shifting, and so must our thinking about life on the edge.